in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to stay sober for 30 days from drugs and alcohol, so make sure that you stay tuned. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And yeah, hey, don't leave, don't you leave yet. If you're not an addict or an alcoholic trying to get sober, make sure that you stick around because there is some very important information in this video that maybe you can share with somebody else that you know who might have a problem with drugs or alcohol and they're wondering how to get started. One of my favorite quotes out there, I love quotes in case you didn't know that, <laughs> but one of my favorite quotes is something to the effect of, the journey of a thousand miles be begins with the first step, right? So it's important to talk about how to stay sober for 30 days from drugs and alcohol. Like, how do you get this first 30 days under your belt? I'm gonna start doing a little bit more of this, um, just different increments of sobriety, because there's very different things that I had to do in order to get my sobriety. And those of you who don't know me, I've been clean and sober since June 23rd, 2012. Got sober on my 27th birthday. So if I stay sober until this June, it'll be six years. That'll be pretty cool. And the first thing I'll t say is, when I first got sober, I never, ever, 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 ever in a million years thought I was gonna stay clean. Not only did I not think I was gonna stay clean, but literally nobody else did. Like, my mom was ready for me to die. Like, she didn't think I was gonna stay clean. And like, throughout my first year, she always said to me like, I never thought you were gonna stay clean. And I'm like, ha, in your face, right? But anyways, so I'm not gonna go through my whole story. I have some other videos that I'll probably link up in the info cards if you wanna check that out. Um, I talk about withdrawal, I talk about what led me to getting sober and things like that, so I won't dive too far into that. So anyways, um, I didn't go to rehab to get sober. I was given an ultimatum to go into a sober living or be homeless, and I'm like, all right, guess I'm going to sober living. So I went into this sober living, and like I mentioned in my detox video, I did a cold turkey detox from opiates. All right, my alcohol withdrawal, had already kind of uh, diminished, so I was no longer really detoxing from alcohol, it was just opiates. And I go into the sober living house and there were some rules, one of the rules was that we had to go to five 12 step meetings a week, AA or NA, or I guess whatever A I could find. But um, because of my cold turkey detox, I was bedridden. Aside from that, like I guess I could have gotten up and gone to meetings, but I'll be honest with you guys, like we had to get a little piece of paper signed and I forged those signatures. So like when I got sober, I hated people. I hated people so much and it's hard for people to realize that because I'm always so happy and cheery and I'm very sociable, but I used to just absolutely hate everybody almost as much as I hated myself. So I isolated in my room, just detoxing, going through misery, forged signatures, and didn't do anything that first week. So when the detox started to end and that fog started to lift, the insanity, the pain, and all those things, I, don't get me wrong, the pain was still kind of there, but the fog started to lift. And then everything just started flooding into my brain, all the guilt, all the shame, all the remorse, everything that I had done to my son, everything that I did to my son's mom, everything that I put my mom through, my dad through, all of my friends, all that stuff was just eating me alive while I'm sitting in that bed alone, right? And I've talked about why you don't isolate, right? Like, I always say this, when you isolate, it's like being in a horror movie and locking yourself in the room with a ki killer. We can be our own worst enemy, even if you're not a drug addict or alcoholic, you know this to be true. So I was trapped in my head and usually when I feel guilty, shameful, remorseful, anything like that, you know what I do? I get really high, but now I couldn't do that. Now I couldn't get high, so what am I gonna do? So I rolled out of bed and I went up to one of my roommates who had a car and I knew they were going to a meeting. I'm like, yo, I'm like, do you have room in your car? I need to go to a meeting, right? Because I figured maybe if I go to a meeting, I can keep myself busy, right? So I go to a meeting, it's an hour long, and I go to this meeting and for that one hour, that one hour, this thing turned off. And after the meeting, I'm like, whoa, holy crap. So if I go to a meeting, I don't have to sit in my head, right? So I started asking him more and more and more. I'm like, can I go with you to a meeting? Can I go with you to a meeting? Because every time I wasn't listening to other people, I was listening to the insane voices going through my head. Those heads telling me that I couldn't stay sober. My head telling me that I didn't deserve 
to stay sober. My head telling me that I should have died like the tens of thousands of other people who can't get clean, right? So I started going to meetings every single day and then I started going to two meetings a day, three meetings a day, but <laughs> that's when it kind of stops for me. I, I've never, I don't think I've ever gone to more than three meetings in a day, but I was purely going to meetings just to get out of my head. They were free, I had friends that I knew who were going to them and I started to get to know the guys in my house. But aside from that, aside from that, Here's just some other useful tips for your first 30 days sober. Like, I just had to sum up all of my willpower just to stay clean. Just to stay clean, right? Like, everything in me was like, just don't use, just don't pick up, just don't pick up, just don't pick up. Like, I knew drug dealers in California. I knew where the liquor store was. I barely had any money, but it was enough. You know what I mean? And I had to use all of this willpower. So something that I do, and this is a trick that I teach a lot of my clients at my rehab, procrastinate. So most addicts and alcoholics are great at procrastinating. So during that first 30 days, what I would do is say, you know what? I'm not gonna get high right now. I'll get high in an hour right? Or I'll get high like at four o'clock, you know? And that's what I would do. I would just push it off, push it off, push it off. And then at night I'd be like, you know what? I'm just going to get high tomorrow. Like the more I procrastinated it, next thing you know, I was getting 10 days, 15 days, 20 days, 30 days. But just a lot of the time I was just trying to find things that kept me busy, whether it was zoning out and watching TV, whether it was uh, just listening to my roommates talk, um, sometimes it was going to play some ping pong or some video games with them. I was just doing whatever I could to just stay busy, all right? So I want you all to know too, like even though I'm talking about going to meetings, like I was extremely close-minded. Like even though I was listening to people, like I was like, you guys are full of crap. Like <laughs> I literally thought that 12-step um, programs were gonna just teach me how to manage my alcohol and manage my drugs. And when people were sharing, like, I haven't used in five years, I'm like, you are so full of crap, I can't believe it. Because that's how crazy we are. Like, we think that it's impossible. How do you even live a life? Like, I'm like, you must at least have beer. Like, you all leave here and you go have beer. Like, that's how twisted we are. Like, even to this day, when I meet people who, like, don't really drink, I'm like, what are you, you know? So, I was just sitting there and I was listening to this, these people, but I didn't believe a word that they were saying, all right? So, even though I didn't believe them, I just kept going back to them. So, if your motivation is just to turn this thing off, just go. They're free, you know? Every, like pretty much every city has them. There's also apps like in the rooms where you can attend meetings online. Like I just had to do that to get out of my head most of the time. But eventually something changed and something happened, which I will cover in another video, all right? So leave your comments down below. If you're somebody in sobriety, let me know what your best tips are for staying sober for 30 days, because maybe somebody will come across it and they'll get some help too, okay? But again, please, 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 even if you're not an addict in recovery and you just happen to watch this video, please share this with someone you know who is struggling with a drug or alcohol addiction because if they can at least get to 30 days, that's probably longer than they've been sober or clean in a very long time. So please do everybody a favor and share this video, all right? But anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here, make sure you click that little round subscribe button. Not only do I make videos about addiction recovery, but I also make a lot of videos to help you out with your mental health, all right? If you want to check out some other videos on this channel, you can click or tap on one of those thumbnails, okay? Thanks again so much for watching. Stay clean and keep busy for 30 days, and I'll see you next time.